clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seen. Tonight, as we continue our series on overcoming worry, tonight I want to talk to you about breaking the habit of worry. How do you know that all of us have habits of some sort? Life, we're filled with things that, that we have that, that are habitual uh, things in our life. You know, we, we almost, uh, a lot of times, confuse habits with always being bad. Habits aren't always bad. There are some very good habits. If you make a habit of when you get up in the morning and reading your Bible and praying, that's a fantastic habit, isn't it? It's a great habit to have. Um, if you make it a habit when you get up on Sunday, you're going to get ready and go to church. That's a great habit habit to have. But we also have some habits that can be unproductive, some habits that can be harmful. And again, uh, like certain things that are good, we become a habit. You know, you brush your teeth. That's a habit. And aren't you glad that you started that as a young age, you know, brushing your teeth, because that's a great habit to have, having, the, have, having oral hygiene. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's a great habit um, to Take a shower or a bath, isn't it? I'm telling you, it's a great habit. It really is a great habit. In fact, so much so, my daughter thinks a bath will cure anything. <laughs> yes. um, the, the water bill has gone down at the parsonage. Just to tell you that. <laughs> Worry can be a habit. It can be something that we begin to do because it is habitual. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter 6. We'll cover a little bit more in this chapter, but Matthew chapter 6, it says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. God, I pray right now that as we share this word tonight, dear God, that you would speak to us, dear God, and that you would... Anoint us, dear God, and let us receive. Dear God, I pray that be it here or be it people who watch online, that, that people will be able to break and overcome worry in their lives and they would be changed, dear God. We know your word changes us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now you look at that verse right there, you say, what does that have to do about worry? But when you look at it, it says, no one can serve two masters. In other words, you can't have the master of worry in your life and the master of peace at the same time. You can't do it. it, it, it you, either you're going to have peace or you're going to have worry. They do not coexist. They won't coexist together. Now, peace can drive out worry, and it's something that we want to have. During World War I, there was a French soldier who used to carry this riding to help him overcome worry. Now, you can imagine being in war. A lot of people worry, don't they? Parents worry over their kids, and... Um, soldiers worry about their lives. But what he carried said this, of two things, one is certain. Either you are at the front or you are behind the lines. If you're at the front of two things, one is certain. Either you are exposed to danger or you are in a safe place. If you're exposed to danger of two things, one is certain. Either you are wounded or you are not wounded. If you are wounded of two things, one is certain. Either you recover or you die. If you recover, there's no need to worry. If you die, you cannot worry. So why worry? Now what a, you look at that statement, and that's really how things happen in our lives. Worry doesn't accomplish a thing for us. It doesn't accomplish a thing for us. This was Jesus' perspective on worry. Jesus basically said, why worry about tomorrow? He asked his disciples, how can we kick the worry habit? Worry is an anxious or fearful state of mind. Worry causes increased muscle tension, upset stomach, anxiety, depression, which leads to even more serious health problems. Chronic warriors often suffer from low self-esteem. 
The Greek word for worry means to be inwardly divided or distracted. So that's what worry does to us. It divides us. It distracts us. And it's why it is a tool the enemy uses. Because what's the enemy's goal is it is to divide and distract you. Worry is a divided mind vacillating between doubt and faith. The English word worry comes from an Anglo-Saxon word meaning to choke or to strangle. And I like the beatitude that says this. Blessed is the man who is too busy to worry during the day and too sleepy to worry at night. Charlie Brown and Linus. How many of you heard of them? You may not have heard of that French soldier, but you all heard of Charlie Brown and Linus. Charlie Brown and Linus were sitting around talking one day, and Charlie says to Linus, I worry about school a lot. He thought a little longer, and then he said, I worry about worrying so much about school. And upon further reflection, he concluded, my anxieties have anxieties. Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. That's what he says in Matthew 6, 25. He doesn't mean we shouldn't have the normal sense of duty and pressure, that normal day-to-day, -day, that worry thing that, that's going to, that we're going to have from time to time, those concerns that, that make us strive for excellence. In other words, you go to your job and you're kind of worried about getting your, your daily task done. That's not the kind of worry he's talking about. He's talking about worries that bring us to anxieties and so forth that dominate our life. Um, it's not that I'm, I'm worried that, that the person I'm driving with or, or I'm riding in the car, have you ever ridden with a car or somebody that tailgates a lot? My oldest brother, he used to tailgate a lot. And, and, um, and, and so I never liked riding with him because um, driving down the freeway or something like that, he would always get right up on somebody's, uh, on somebody's car or something like that. And, you know, that, 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 that makes me nervous. I worry a little bit about that because I don't like to do that. I like to keep a safe distance between me and somebody else. Um, you know, that, that, that's what I like to do. But, you know, that's not, that, that, that's not the kind of worry we're talking about. We're talking about worries that dominate us, that, that we can't get over. And that's where the, Jesus says, take no thought for tomorrow. And that can be misunderstood. Jesus means we're not to be obsessed with fear about physical provisions and because, uh, you know, I, I, they, they were so upset, I, I, I'm afraid I, I won't have enough money to make my bills or I'm afraid, I, uh, I, I'm afraid about the future. I'm afraid about all these things. That was the first thing when I went into Brother Walls' room this, mor this morning. He had the news on. And he had on watching it, and he said, you know, he says, uh, he says, this stuff is depressing. I said, then why do you have it on? Every time I go in there, he's got it on. I said, why don't you shut it off? It's football season. I mean, that could get you depressed, too. You just never know how that works out, right? Isn't that right, Michael Allen? Uh, but the, 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 the fact is, you know, if you, worry, if you worry over every event that's happening in the world, Shut Fox News off or CNN News or MSNBC. Shut it off for a little bit and, 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 and turn on something that will make you laugh if you got to watch TV. I'm preaching better than you're shouting right now. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Jesus then tells us, he says, look at the birds of the air. You know, the birds, they're not worried about everything, are they? But God's figured out a way to take care of them, hasn't he? My dogs don't worry about a thing. They have absolute faith that every morning between 5.30 and 6 o'clock they're going to get fed. And every evening they're going to get fed. They, they have faith in it. Faith's over. They don't worry about it all throughout the day. They're fine. But they have faith that they're going to be fed. And they're going to bark a little bit to make sure it happens. But... Or a lot, they're gonna they're gonna need that. But understand, I mean, uh, it, it, it's 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 amazing. They know they have that time clock in their little minds, and and and, and they're ready for. It. But they know they're gonna get fed. They have faith, and, and if I were to misfeed them, 
You know, they still know that they're going to get fed at some time. They just know what's going to happen. They don't worry about it. But we, what do we do? We worry about these things. And, 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 and you know what? That's something that the birds and the animals have on us. They're not worried about things. And God's taking care of them. Then how much more does God love you than he loves those animals? You see, that? that's where, that, that's where we need to look at and understand. And understand your place. You know, the birds... They're not worried about when winter comes. They're storing up for it today. They're taking care of it today. And that's what we have to do. Here, I want to give you three lessons that Jesus gave us to kick the worry habit. And that's what we want to do, kick the worry habit. Everybody say, kick the worry habit. Kick the worry habit. Here's what you've got to do. The very first thing you have to do is sort out your worry. Sort out your worry. This is good for you. Sort out your worry. Now, if you're going to sort out your worry, then you've got to divide that sorting into three things. So let's look at, we worry about three things, essentially, in life. And Jesus mentions that in this passage. What do we worry about? The first thing we worry about is our treasure. Everybody worries about their treasure, don't they? Jesus talks about um, worry over our life, our food, our clothing, and all these things in life. But yet he tells us we cannot serve God and money. And like I told Brother Walls today, there's not any material blessing that you've got that you're going to take with you. Whether you lose it today or you lose it when you die, those material things are not going to last. You know, the brand new pair of shoes that you had that have that you saw, that I've got to have those shoes eventually becomes old shoes. They eventually become old shoes. All new shoes eventually become old shoes. All new cars eventually become old cars. You see, the, all new houses eventually become old houses. And so we begin to worry about these treasures in our lives and, 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 and worry about the things that, 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 that we think we have to have or that we can't live without. And, and, and Jesus tells us, he says, look, you can't serve God and money at the same time. Do you need money? Absolutely, you've got to have money to live, right? You've got to pay your bills. You've got to buy food. That stuff doesn't come free. I get that. You've got to, you've got to have money to pay your electric bill. But we don't have to, we don't have, to have everything. And we don't have, to, we, we don't have to have Amazon bringing us something every day. Uh, it seems like we do. But we don't have to have that. Sometimes there are things that we don't have to have. But treasures are things. Okay, so we sort that treasures. The second thing that we have to sort out is time. God gave us the system of time in creation as a way of organizing life. Genesis records creation in how many days? Seven days, right? So let's look at it. Seven days. Every day, God deposits in your life. You see, you're not guaranteed but that day. And you're not even guaranteed that whole day, are you? But you've got today. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. But if you get this whole day, that means this whole day, you've got 24 hours. 1,440 minutes. If you want to think that this day's a long day, then think of it this way. You've got 86,400 seconds on this day, August 23rd, 2023. You've got this day. I, you know, that times, as we begin to look at it, time is one of those things that's very precious to you. And we've got to sort it out. And so I can't live tomorrow until I've lived through today. Life management is simply time management. That's what life management is. The, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.1, what does it tell us? It tells us there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. You see, there's a time for almost everything in your life. And in reality, I hear people say, I don't have enough time. When... Most of us have enough time 
we just don't manage our time. We have to, we have to, the taking, if you take every moment as precious, but did you know every single day you're going to have 24 hours? Every single week you've got 168 hours. I mean, you have that. If, if, if you live a whole week, you're going to have 168 hours. And so understand, we have those things that are given to us. But we're told by the Apostle Paul, he says, we're to redeem the time. Why are we to redeem the time? Because the days are evil, is what Paul said. And so, so we're, we're supposed to do that and, and understand that. When a lonely frog consulted a fortune teller, he was told not to worry about the fortune teller. You're going to meet a beautiful young girl, and she will want to know everything about you. That's great, said the excited frog. When will I meet her? Next semester, the psychic said, in biology class. You'll get that if you ever dissect a frog. There was a couple in their 90s, they went to a restaurant, but they were told they would have to wait one hour. I think I've been with this person to the restaurant before. Young man, we're 90 years old, the man told the host. We may not have an hour. They received it immediately. I'm sure he was having a sinking spell. Time. Sort it out. So we have, we have our treasures. We have time. But we also have transitions. And life moves in seasons. My life moves in seasons. Did you know in different seasons of your life, there are certain things that, that as your body changes, there are certain things that, that changes about the way your body reacts to stuff? Because your body has seasons, right? Um, when you're young, you may, you, you may be able to eat anything and it not bother you. I mean, you, could, you, you may be able to take a garbage can lid and chew it when you're young. And, you know, I mean, it, 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 I mean it, you know, when you're young, it seems like, you know, now I know some young people that, that, that maybe they, they don't have um, good constitution or whatever, but, but when you're young, seemingly, I mean, I watch young people. I've taken plenty of young people to eat over time, and, and, and most of the time, I've seen them say, well, I'm not very hungry, but I've seen them shovel enough food away um, to feed a half an army. And, and, and you know they don't their, their metabolisms are, are fast they they don't gain weight they, they they you know and I don't know maybe not so much now because really the other thing that works fast on young people now is their hands when they're playing video games or texting but the, um, the the fact is growing up I watched my kids you know they, they, they could they could eat just about anything they did eat just about anything and, and, and the season but as you get older you find that you react differently he said, when, when you were 16 years old and you could eat a bowl of ice cream, when you get 54 years old, you've got to be very choosy about when you have ice cream. Because you can run three miles and it's still not work that ice cream off. Because it's just the metabolism doesn't work as fast. There's transitions. We go, grow through seasons of childhood, adolescence, young, adult, how many of you remember when you were 16 years old? I remember when you were 16. I know some of you probably can't remember that far back. I get it. But you remember when you were 16 years old and, you know, you, when you were 18 years old? You know, 18 years old really was more important to me than 16, Sister Patricia, because I was driving farm trucks way before I was 16 years old. And I waited to get my license because I didn't want to have to drive a bob truck because as soon as I got my license, I knew I'd have to drive a bob truck. And I didn't want to drive one of those big things, but as soon as I was 16, Dad put me in a bob truck. And, and so if I'd had my license before, he'd put me in one at 15. And um, I know he'd have made me get one of them hardship things, and I did not want that. So 16 wasn't that big a deal because I didn't walk outside on my 16th birthday and, and have a brand new car. I walked outside on my 16th birthday and caught the school bus. And, and so 16 wasn't as big a deal. 18 was a big deal for me. 18 was a big deal because the moment I turned 18 years old, I went and registered to vote. I thought it was that important. And in 1988, 
uh, by the time I was 19, I got to vote in my first national election. It was a huge deal for me. It was a huge deal for me to, to do that. It was, a, it was a big thing. I remember how important that was back then at 18 years old. And, 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 and I still believe those things are important. But I look now at, at, at today at 54 years old, and in my mind, sometimes I like to think of myself as being 18 years old. And then I looked the other day at some of the pictures from Katie Beth's wedding, and, and I looked at myself and I said, that's not the hair that I had when I was 18. That, that, that's, that's not the hair I had when I got married. And I began to look at it, and I said, that's not who, who I see in my mind, but when I look in the mirror, that's who I see. It's different. The life is full of transitions. Don't, don't. You, that, that's part of getting older is things change. It's transitions. But you know, they're not a bad thing. You can't, you're not going to stay in the same stages at all times in life. And, and if we try to fight getting older, we're going to make ourselves miserable. Well, we're worried about, why worry about getting older when you should cherish getting older? Oh, you didn't hear me. Why worry about it? God, for when, 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 when you get another birthday, thank God God gave you another year. What a blessing that is. What a blessing it is. Every day is a blessing. And, and so don't worry about it. If you have to go from another stage to another stage to another stage, that's just God blessing you as you build up in life. People worry about it. I'm afraid to get old. <clears throat> don't be afraid to get older. In fact, don't even call it getting old. Just say, I'm getting older. Old is just relative anyhow, isn't it? Absolutely. It's relative to who you're around. Relative to how you act. And so, that, those are the transitions in life. So you, if you're going, you've got to sort out treasures time and transitions. But the second thing, other than sorting out your worries, see the futility of worry. Maybe this is one of the most important things you'll hear. See, what does it mean for something to be futile? It means it doesn't matter. And it doesn't help. I mean, you, you have to know three things about worry and its futility. One, worry is an exercise in futility. You'll never pay one of your bills by worrying about it. You'll never get healthy by worrying about your sickness. You'll never get a job promotion by worrying about it. You'll never fix your relationship by worrying about it. You'll never fix your children and control your children by worrying about them. You'll never heal a sickness by worrying about it. And you'll never make yourself happy by worrying. Here are the facts about what we worry about. 40%, we worry about 40% on things that will never happen. So 40% of this is the biggest part of your worry. 40% of the things you worry about never happen. 30% on things about the past that you can't change. So 70% of the things we worry about, it's futile to worry about them. 12%, oh, this is a good one. We worry on things, how others criticize us. Well, okay. And mostly, it's untrue anyhow. 10% on health, and you know what happens when you worry about your health? You make it worse because of stress. 8% about real problems that you're going to figure out how to handle. So you have 8% legitimate worries, and you're going to figure out how to do those things anyhow. So, you see where worrying, the futility of it? Worry is also a luxury you can't afford. Now, there's lots of other luxuries you'd rather have in life, right? But worry is a luxury you can't afford. 
worry is a contributing factor to this. High blood pressure, arthritis, heart disease, and ulcers. Now, how many of you want those things? So don't add to them by worrying. Be careful, Jesus cautioned, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and anxieties of life. Follow Jesus' advice. And worry neutralizes your faith. So what happens? As you're worrying about it, your worry is combating your faith. It's neutralizing your faith. In 1 John, we're told that faith helps us overcome the world, right? That's what we find in 1 John chapter 5. But when we don't have it, when we don't have faith, because we're concentrating on worry, and we're not showing faith, then the world is overcoming us. So there again, you turn on the news on, and you're worried about the hurricanes that hit California, or you're worried about the, the natural disaster that may happen here, or the tornado that could happen, or whatever hurricanes are going to hit the Gulf this summer, or the end of this summer in the fall, and worried about those things, or worrying about whether or not that, 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 that the next election that's going to take place, and worrying about those things. While we're worrying about those things, what's happening is, is we are, we're allowing the world to overcome us when God has given us faith to overcome the world. Amen. Hudson Taylor, he was one of the earliest missionaries to China. And he gave this excellent advice to those who were accepting the challenge of his missionary work. He says, let us give up our work, our thoughts, our plans, ourselves, our lives, our loved ones, our influence, our all right into God's hand. And then when we have all, when we have given all over to him, there will be nothing left for us to be troubled about. So what he said, if we'll just go ahead and give everything over to God, there'll be nothing left for you to worry about. And that's what we're supposed to do as people of God. Hallelujah. I'm not worried if the church is going to stand in these last days. You know what? Because I have a promise from the Word of God that says the gates of hell shall not prevail. Do, 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 do anybody still believe that? You see, I, I still believe God still does things. That God still saves souls. That God still, that, that God will still work in people's lives. Don't allow yourself to get disheartened in the condition of this world. You know what you need to look at? You need to look at the world we're in today and see that this world is now the greatest mission field in the history of the world. If you look out at the world and you see that all the, te the terrible things happen, all the ungodly things happen in your world, don't worry about those things. You need to look at that as opportunity and say, those are people that need Jesus and there are people people to take Jesus to them. We, don't, we can't have a defeatist attitude. We need to walk out of worry. Walk into faith. The third thing to help you break the habit of worrying. So first, we have to sort out our worries. And second, we have to see the futility of worry. Third, Surrender your worry. What did Peter tell us? Come to music. Cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you believe that Jesus cares for you? Do you? Then if you believe that Jesus cares for you, 
This, this is what you've got to do. You've got to cast your cares on Him. You know what casting your cares on Him are? Would you think about it this way? I don't like wasting things. But You've got your hair here. You're feeling bad because of a situation in your family. Taking it. You've wiped that situation in your family on this. And you're holding on to it. Jesus says that situation is something I don't want you to worry about. So I want you to give it to me. You go to the altar. You take that situation and you wipe all the dirt from that situation on this thing right here. You go to the altar. You take it and you lay it there. You've got a situation in your health. And you've been worrying about it. it, it, it it's had you discouraged it. You take it and you wipe the dirt of that situation off. And you take it to the altar and cast it to you, Jesus. You got a lost child and you're worried about that lost child and, 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 and you think, I don't know if I can ever reach him. I don't know if I can ever reach her. You wipe it, wipe the nerve of that and say, I'm, I'm going to give it to Jesus. You struggle with your finances and you just don't know if you're going to be able to pay your bills and if they're going to, if, if it's, if it's going to get any better and, and you've got more money, you got money, you, and, and, and yeah, you may have gotten, you may have dug yourself a hole and, and, and it may be troublesome and, 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 and you don't know how you're going to get it done and you want to do it, you want to live biblically and, and you take it, you wipe it on your, on the, just the dirt of it all in here and, and you, you get the point you got and you lay it on this altar. You went to Jesus, I'm going to give it to you. And that, that, that's the beginning of surrendering your, your, your worries, right? That's the beginning of surrendering those things to Him. But here's the problem. Here's what happens a lot of times. We go and we, we give those things to Jesus. And we say, Jesus, I'm going to give those to you. But when we get up from the altar, instead of us leaving them there, instead of leaving them where Jesus can have them, we pick them up and we take them back with us. Say, I, you know what? I'm going to take this family situation. I'm going to take this health situation. I'm going to take this child. I'm going to take this financial situation. Whatever it may be, I'm going to take it back with me. And I've not gotten any better about it, but I prayed about it, but I took it back. I didn't surrender it. But if you're going to break the habit of worry, you've got to surrender it to Him. Whatever it may be. You guys say, I can't take this weight anymore. Essentially, the dirt in those things becomes the baggage we have in our life. You know, I've never seen anybody clean their trash can before they filled it up with trash. Have you? No. You know what I do? There have been a few times I've dug through trash before. I remember one Christmas, each of the kids got $100 from their Uncle Kenny who passed away. We were living in Marion, and somebody got to throw away trash. Oh, Brother Ken, somebody threw away one of, one of the kids' $100 bills. That cold Christmas afternoon, I was digging through trash. Looking for a hundred dollars, boy! I found it. God. Now I'll dig through trash for a hundred dollars, okay? But I won't dig through trash for trash. Once I got rid of it, put it in the barrel, I pull it to the road and let them take it. 
Well, these problems you have, they're not trash. But when you surrender, leave them with Jesus. Leave them with Jesus. Picture yourself doing this. Stand to your feet. I, I, I like the image here. I want you to shut your eyes. I want you in your mind's eye. I want you to think about it for a moment. I want you to think about this in your mind's eye. I like the image of casting. When he says casting here, I like that image. Picture yourself throwing your worries all the way to heaven and letting God take care of them. Can, can you picture it right now? And here's what I want you to do with your eyes shut. I want you to picture the biggest things you're worried about in your life right now. I want you to picture those things that you're worried about right now. And would you pray this with me? Pray this with me out loud. I want you to pray it and I want you to mean it. Lord, I can't carry the weight of this worry anymore. I don't know what to do in this situation. I've done everything I know to do and everything that's in my power. But today, right now, I surrender the situation to you. I release it to you. I cast it to you. Today, I'm going to rest in you. And I'm going to stand back as I watch you work out all things for my good. Lord, you alone, you're able to do, more, to do more than I can ask or I can think is possible. I know your work. You're working it out for me. I trust you with my worries. I trust you with my circumstances. I trust you with those things. I trust you with my life, with every bit of it. I'm not picking it back up. I've given it to you, and I trust you with it. Today, I surrender my worry, my worries, every one of them. I surrender my family. I surrender my finances. I surrender my health. I, 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 I surrender. I, I surrender my child. I surrender my spouse. I surrender the church. I surrender. I, I surrender my fears. I surrender my depressions. I surrender my anxieties. I surrender them all to you. In the name of Jesus, break the habit of worry off of me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would encourage you. Look, if you want the three basic things, if you didn't get those, you want those three things to help you break in this habit of worry, um, get with me. I, I can take some to you. I can... Um, you know, um, or you can watch when Brother Ron um, puts the pictures on Facebook. On. <laughs> oh, you didn't get them all. But, um, but you can look at those things and they will help you with it. How many of you want to have it broken free from you? Well, you look so pretty and not so beautiful. It's all right. Look at somebody next to you and say, well, you look good tonight.